thank you for joining us for this episode of Fort Worth Forward. I'm excited to bring to you some great stories today, including Stacy Pierce with Streams and Valleys, Wim Bowie Richardson and Christy Howard with Jubilee Theater, including a special performance from their current cast of Southern Boys. And lastly, communications expert Jennifer Sarver. It's going to be a great show, so let's get it started. Thanks for joining us today. I'm happy to have in studio with us today Stacy Pierce from Streams and Valleys. It's a great organization here in Fort Worth that really brings a focus back to the Trinity River. Stacy, thanks for joining us today here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Well, for our audience members that aren't familiar with Streams and Valleys, tell us a little bit about the organization, its history, purpose, what's, what's, why it's here. Terrific. Well, we are the voice of the Trinity River, the only nonprofit organization devoted to the health and uh, well-being of this wonderful um, resource that we all have, this amenity. And so in 1969, the river did not look like it looks today. But thanks to our partners at the City of Fort Worth and the Tarrant Regional Water District and many others, um, we have found our way back to the river. Mm -hmm. Um, through the trail system and through so many efforts to connect all of our neighborhood and people to the very thing that is the reason that Fort Worth exists today. When you, you, brought, you brought, up, brought up that in 69 the river didn't look like it did today. I think there, Phyllis Tilly is the founders of, of, uh, founder of Streams and Valleys and, and, I, and tell that story. But, yeah. Well, okay, so I was never fortunate enough to meet Phyllis, but the story goes that after years of working in social service and other areas in Fort Worth, she drove over the 7th Street Bridge, realized that the Trinity River was literally a ditch with tires and appliances in it, no water. It was the most wonderful thing Fort Worth had going, and somehow we needed to find our way back to the river. We had built levees by then to protect us from the floods like After happened in 1949, 1949 right? Mm -hmm. and, and literally it was hard for people to even get to it or see it. Um, so out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. And so Streams and Valleys began first as a committee of the city council and then later as a nonprofit to keep our focus on the river and what we could do to um, clean it up, to protect it, to maintain it, and most of all, to make it a, an amenity and a, and a place for people to enjoy. Yeah. Well, I know we, it's great. I know uh, Major Ripley Arnold founded for right. the fort that became right. Fort Worth right. and, and picked the spot because of where it sat with the river. Right. So right. it's amazing that we sort of turned away from it. And I know development over the years had turned its back on the river. Right. And we've really done a focus now of putting development on the river, people enjoying the river. And I, how do you see that uh, coming together? Well, I think it is more exciting now than it's ever been, not only in what's been done. And I mean, it's taken 50 years. We've taken old maintenance roads and made them trails, and, and we've found a way to um, utilize the levees in a different way. I mean, we can run on top of them now, and, mm -hmm. and used to be people didn't I do, do that. I do. I run on right. I run, love it. Love we've it. made all of the easiest connections we can make, and some tremendously difficult ones. Um, and, and now we have um, a philosophy and, and great examples of what it looks like when you develop property or restaurant or residential on the river and, and just what an amazing backyard that becomes. Um, instead of putting you know, the, the trash receptacle next to the river, we've put our outdoor dining and our, our um, opportunities for us to be together and to, um, and to enjoy that natural resource and it, so it's, it's thriving, and it's only given us bigger and brighter and better dreams for connecting to Dallas and Arlington and other cities that have a network, too. I mean, we're... Through the trail system. Exactly yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. it's just an amazing um, engine, I think, for us, and an amazing gathering place. That's great. Well, one of the things that we've been working on together for a period of time right. is this Bomber Spur Trail Project. Right. Um, right. It's been exciting for me uh, because it will um, complete a loop, if we can get it all done, a loop right. around Fort Worth on right. the trail system that right. then connects to Arlington and Dallas that right. talk about. So tell our viewers a little bit about, it's important to District 3, but I think it's important for the whole city, what it is and, and, and where we are in that project. Okay. Well, it is important to District 3 because that's where it, uh, that's the location of it. However, Bomber Heights area. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. However, um, as you mentioned, it does connect our two forks of the river, the West Fork and the Clear Fork, and it makes a 26-mile loop that right now does not exist in our network. And so we're in the process of um, 
completing the vision and master plan. Um, so to back up a little bit, this little seven mile spur took um, parts and supplies into what was back in the 40s, um, Convair, the bomber plant, and um, Carswell Air Force Base, now Lockheed and the Joint Reserve Naval Base. Right. So, and it crossed in seven short miles some major um, thoroughfares, Southwest Boulevard, Camp Bowie twice, Vickery, um, I-30. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was an amazing short, um, spur off of an old UP line. So what we're doing now is taking that corridor that used to be a rail line, converting it into a trail that people and um, and visitors can enjoy, our residents, visitors can enjoy. Um, we have solidified the alignment, which means we know exactly where it's going to go. <laughs> now we're in the process of figuring out what it's going to look like. So rather than just having a concrete strip that you walk or ride or run on, um, we want to talk about what the amenities are. Where are the water fountains? What does the signage look like? Where can you get to it from the neighborhood? We want to make sure that all the neighborhoods have a way to get there um, and that we can cross over again I-30 and those big major streets in a safe way. Um, so that is carrying through this fall. And then we start assembling funding from federal sources and hopefully our local public will be supportive and um, and we're going to transform that that area into yet one more crown jewel in this network that we all love. Well that's great it's I I know we can get it done it'll be a great amenity as you said for those neighborhoods but really all of Fort Worth. For everyone anybody that enjoys the system uh, be a great place to have a marathon that's not something we currently um, have an easy way to do and so like I said it benefits everyone and um, we're tickled to again work with the city and numerous other partners to make that happen. That's great. That's great. Well, I think uh, you, Streams and Valleys, re received some international recognition through your confluence plan. Well, correct. tell us about that. Yeah. So I, I have to say that I think the reason the river's been such a success story is because we are good as a community at thinking big and creating a plan to make those big dreams realities. And so a couple of years ago, along with again all of our partners, we don't do any of this. By ourselves, um, we wrote the fourth strategic plan for the river, which now um, it's called Confluence, and it really is our roadmap for what we do in the next 50 years, most specifically the next 10, um, to, to elevate what we've already accomplished. And, um, and that plan, along with um, the Central City Plan, is on display at, uh, at an event called the Biennale in Venice, Italy. It is the premier architectural conference in the world. Wow. More than 700,000 people attend from May to November. And so it's really thrilling that not only is our central city project being featured, um, our flood control project, but also Confluence, which really is a plan. It's a roadmap. Um, it's not any one project. Um, so we're really tickled that what Fort Worth is doing as a community can be featured internationally. That's great. The uh, uh, really important for us too there too to show what we're doing here really matters across the board and that we have some great ideas that what we're doing with our river that other people might take from that too, right? Right, yeah. right. And in both cases, uh, you know, our flood control plan and the work that the Tarrant Regional Water District is doing and the work that the city is doing um, and what we round out as the nonprofit organization, um, it's actionable. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I think when um, neighbors in Dallas or um, colleagues in other cities look at Fort Worth and say, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. It's, well, we did it all working together. We did it with a, a goal in mind. And then everybody, you know, collaborated and figured out how they could forward the collective plan for everybody's benefit. We do that really well here. That's and as we grow, I think that's critical that we keep that spirit those relationships, that framework in place, because none of us could do it without any of the others. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we um, frequently get calls into the office about you know things uh, about the trail system. Right, right. You know, it's it's uh, we have to sort of figure out: is it a city part of the trail? Right, right. Is it CRWD who you know to, who has control? Right. But tell us a little about a new program that you're impl implementing that I think will be helpful for citizens share the trail. Okay. Yeah. Well, so a few years ago, um, we started an effort called Share the Trail, which was um, a community campaign aimed at helping people know how to be safe when they're on that network. Um, because you know, it looks an awful lot like a sidewalk 
walk, but it isn't. It's like a street. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the rules of engagement <laughs> kind of uh, work pretty well, uh, tr transferring from a street to, to that network. Um, in particular, we have a lot of new users. Mm -hmm. um, COVID has prompted people to get out on the system more, and that's wonderful. We have a lot of young kids learning to ride their bikes and a lot of moms with strollers. And we also have a lot of folks um, who are trying to age as healthily as they can um, in their wheelchairs and using other devices that assist them, whether it's a recumbent bike or a cane or a walker. Um, and so Share the Trail is aimed to help everybody stay safe and, and enjoy the network. Most specifically, um, we're about to finally um, formally launch our ambassador program. And this is a group of individuals who love the system, who are on it all the time, um, either walking or running or riding, whatever they do. Um, they want to be your point of contact if you have a question. They want to help people know what to do to be safe. They are intended to be positive ambassadors um, and people that if you need to know where the restroom is, if you need to know um, how to get from one place to another, they'll help you. Um, but they'll also hopefully be able to point out um, some things um, that help everyone who's on the network be safe. Whether it's pass on the left, stay to the right, make sure that your dogs um, have a leash and that you pick up after them, um, all sorts of things like that. Well, that's very helpful. It's a constant education right, with folks right. about how you use and share. So thanks for putting, putting that together, that program. Well, we'd love for anybody that wants to be an ambassador to come do that. All you have to do is go to our website. There's an easy way to click on that. We'll train you and give you everything you need to know, and then you can get out there and start making friends yourself. Wonderful, wonderful. The, what future plans are out there? Well, we're about to start a new campaign soon in the fall, so I'm not going to tease it too much. Just know that there will be a really great way for everyone to participate in making the trails better. We have some improvements in mind that will add the things that people say they want the most, which is more access to the river and the trails, more beauty, more amenities. Um, and, um, and so, you know, we're thinking about trees and widening trails and adding things that would be places for you to enjoy, not only as you're moving through, but as you want to sit and relax. So places to um, be shaded, places to get a drink, places for your pets to have water, um, new trees, new landscaping, those kinds of things that I think will add um, a wonderful dimension to the great network we already have. Lots of amenities Lots there. Lots of amenities, yeah. And I think you have a, a club that people, if they want a, a membership club. About to launch yeah, that yeah, in yeah. Uh, later in August. It's the Friends of the Trinity River. And it's a great way for our community to invest in the river. I think so often, all of us do, right? We get to thinking about how um, the city's going to take care of things or the TRWD will take care of things. And they do so much. But there's more. Right. I mean, for us to really do all the great things in this plan, for us to um, embrace this network as our own. It's a chance for you, um, all of us, to engage and to invest. So whether that's, gosh, I'll pick up the trash that I just happened to see on my walk, or it's I'll give my $10 to buy a square foot of trail because that needs to be done. There's all sorts of ways that you can, um, and, and our whole community, can have impact, have ownership, and make this already wonderful network better and better. And really just appreciate our river. Exactly How, right. However you, it, do, you can do it, whether it's you picking up trash or right. you donating money right. so other I mean, people can do it. Just appreciate the river. Everyone's. It's everyone's. And, and you know, it's one of the major reasons people move here. Mm -hmm. It's a major reason people stay here. And, um, and who doesn't love being able to get close to water mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or form? Whether you get in it or on it or you just enjoy driving by it, um, it's just amazing amazing thing we have and um, and we've transformed it and yet we've only really barely scratched the surface and what the future can bring so I hope everybody will become a friend of the river become an ambassador um, how can they find out how can how can <laughs> they be do, how can they do that if you will just go to streams and valleys website it is streams and valleys org you can find your way um, we our partners have great websites as well the Trinity Trails website TRWD the city of Fort Worth um, Parks Department we all are collaborating um, on making this network um, as good as it possibly can be and so get in there and find your place and if you have a question call me I'll help you Great. Well, Stacy, thanks for being here today. My pleasure. Really appreciate it. Stick around. We'll be right back. 
I'm now here with Wambui Richardson and Christy Howard from Jubilee Theater. Jubilee Theater is a great gym here in Fort Worth whose mission is to give voice to the African American experience. Welcome, Rambui. Christy, thanks, thanks for thank being you. on today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Here. Yeah, great, great. We do have this gym. Jubilee Theater is this gym here in Fort Worth. It's located on Main Street. And so just tell us a little bit about the history for our viewers that don't know about the history of Jubilee Theater. Sure. Jubilee Theater is 40 years young. Um, was this year, I think, right? This yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. This year, June 19, 1981, our late founder, Rudy Eastman, and his wife, Marion, created a space. Um, he was a phenomenal playwright and really wanted to create a space to begin to tell his stories. Um, at that time, it was hard for African American artists to have a place to hone their skills, for actors to be on stage, for um, tech designers and individuals to be on stage. And so they've created this space that was actually a gypsy slash nomadic space. Jubilee Theater has had a home across from what is now Texas Wesleyan on Rosedale. Mm. Um, they, we performed in restaurants when they were closed, clubs when they were closed. In fact, the old Caravan of Dreams was a normal stomping ground for Jubilee. And then now we're here in the heart of Sundance Square. I often say we have the best address in Sundance Square, 506 Main. And um, we're just really excited about our storied history, but more importantly our future and where we're going. That's great. Well I think I read a little bit about you know Mr. Eastman passed away before or as renovations were happening with the theater. Is that correct? He passed away just as renovations completed. It was just like my work is now. My done. work is done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you or the artistic director yes, Lindley, you came in I think 2018. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tell us a little bit. Starting how you, my fourth season. Fourth season. So how you how did you get to Jubilee? What brought you to Jubilee and and uh, you know what exciting things are you seeing there? Gotcha. So I came from Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Originally born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. Okay. But for the last 13 years, I've been in Baltimore, where I was the executive director for a school as well as um, lead teaching artist for Baltimore Center Stage. And the goal for me was to kind of take both sides of my brain and put them into one enterprise. And I've always known that I wanted to be an artistic director. And the skills I acquired from being an executive director, as well as working with uh, Baltimore Center Stage, and being, you know, always being a full-time uh, director, all kind of came together. And when this opportunity came, it really was a great uh, chance for me to uh, define my own artistic voice and to do so with an org organization that was in alignment with uh, my own personal view views and values as well. That's great. How have you found being in Fort Worth from wherever you, everywhere else, from you everywhere. Live? Yeah, <laughs> everywhere else that you've lived and, and, and raised? How have you found Fort Worth? Well, the, the blessing is that I have Southern roots. And yeah. so coming back here was just picking up on those roots um, and en enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, I know a lot of businesses were hit hard during COVID. Um, in different ways. And so how, how did COVID change what you did or uh, how you <laughs> the production? The word is pivot. The, pivot. Yes, pivot. Pivot. pivot, okay, you had to pivot? Mm -hmm. so, On a dime. On a dime, <laughs> yes. that's right, that's right. So we really wanted to continue to honor our patrons mm -hmm. by, you know, we had promised this season, we had promised these shows and individuals were sitting at home and they were absorbing Netflix and Hulu and running out of things to watch and so we said, well, why can't we just do our shows and mm -hmm. we'll record those? Well, it sounded like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we can keep actors working, we can keep crew members working, we can keep, you know, keep the space going. It was a different beast. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to be doing live be theater. Back live, yeah. Be back <laughs> live, be back live. Yes, that's great. That is our gift. Mm -hmm. And we're going to operate in that gift, yeah. but it, it yeah. went well. It did, and I think that was the biggest blessing of it all. Um, when we both sat down and had that conversation, it was about, one, how do we make sure that our programming stays consistent, that the quality of work that we do stays consistent, and most importantly, there are so many artists out there that they plan their gigs a year in advance, and they plan those paychecks. Right. in advance and so we wanted to make sure that in every way possible we honored those actors writers designers so that we could one provide that quality mm -hmm. service to our patrons but also ensure that the artists of the the dfw area stayed working that's great that's great i do know too we worked i don't know if you remember this we were on some zoom calls 
as part of the, the first tranche of CARES Act money did not include nonprofits, et cetera. Did but not. we worked to make mm -hmm. sure that nonprofits were included in the mm -hmm. second tranche of money, mm -hmm. which I think y'all benefited from to we keep did. the doors open and keep some of the production and keep mm -hmm. people employed. So I'm, gl I'm glad that was able to, we were able to do that and sort of work together to make sure that everybody benefited. So. Right. And I think one of the things, Jubilee was one, is one of the few theaters, there's like 14 other theaters within Fort Worth, but we were one of the few theaters that were able to continue to operate pretty much in the manner we were mm -hmm. um, prior to, simply because we are not what's considered an equity theater. Mm -hmm. The union really put a snag in being able to hire um, Lo some of the local actors as well as some of the local tech people. So it really gave us an opportunity to wrap our arms around a fresh crop of actors and mm -hmm. actresses that have really been wanting to step into and step on stage. And um, we have definitely, as you and the audience were able to see, we're able to pick up some gems along the way. Yeah, and we're going to yeah. hear from a couple of your or, or <laughs> from your actors uh, shortly. So I'm excited about that performance. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I did get to see Southern Boys. It was a great production. Um, you. You know, I'll tell you that Something to be Done was my favorite uh, <laughs> song in the production. That, as we as I've said, the, just the, the stage, everything about it, but it resonated with me because there's no matter what your job is, there's something to be done, always, right, all the always. time. So tell us a little bit about the production itself. I think it was a partnership with Bass Hall, right? It was. Yeah. Dion Kennedy and I have, mm. you know, have had a long history of every time we talk to one another, it's in crisis. First it was gender <laughs> fluid bathrooms. Now it was COVID and shuttered venues and, and, how, and how we positioned ourselves to be the voice of the artistic community. And so we promised one another that we were going to find a way to partner in such a way that we get to do what we love, which is produce great theater. And the opportunity in the window came about and it has been magic. Yeah. We absolutely love the Performing Arts Fort Worth staff um, and you know, just am very grateful to them and their board for opening up their house and giving us this opportunity. Jubilee, we love our space, but it's little, mm -hmm. it's intimate, it's mm -hmm. cozy, and we like that. But we also know that when you're talking about bringing an audience back in, coming off the cusp mm -hmm. of a COVID, we needed that room to spread out to breathe mm -hmm. and, and so forth. So we're you know, very elated about the time and this new found friend in mm -hmm. theater, um, <laughs> because this is the first time that we've ever done anything as a partnership with them, and it's, it has been a tremendous experience. Exactly, That's yeah. great. Well, do you want to tell our audience a little bit about Southern Boys, what it's about, oh, and the production let's itself? Do that. Yeah. Kathy D. Harrison's Southern Boys. This is the story of sharecroppers right after uh, Juneteenth, right. the, the freedom of, of us all. And it is a story of these ladies and gentlemen as they ask themselves, yes, we're free, but what do we do with it? And where do we take it from here? And it is a battle of two generations. One generation that has experienced slavery and this new generation that doesn't know what it is or new, knows what it is, but hasn't personally experienced it. And it is that, is this enough for me? or do I want more? And it is so much, even though we're talking about a very specific time in the world, this is such an American story, such an American experience and thought in that what do we do when what we have is not enough? Do we ask ourselves the big question to make this work or do we find a way to look for something more? You know, and even in our everyday lives. The story lives. that still resonates yeah. today, right? You know, yeah. Are we still sharecroppers? Right. You know, who is still sharecropping? And are you ready to put the fields down, so to speak? You know, bless our hearts, we have people that are graduating with $150,000 plus in um, loan debts. So for the rest of their life, the next 30 to 40 years, they're working to do that. Or we have ladies and gentlemen that worked in the coal mines up in Appalachian Mountains. Those people were just as, uh, taken aback as we were in that time period because they weren't getting paid. They were getting paid the same way um, cotton uh, field workers were being paid. They were being paid in rations and everything was being deducted from them and their lives were just as hard and in many cases just that short. Right. So yes, we're talking about a specific point in time, but it is something that all of us have the ability to tap into mm -hmm. that feeling and that need to want something greater than what you have. It's, very, it's powerful. It's powerful, and um, there's still a lot of work to be done mm -hmm. in that exactly. sense. So, 
Um, I, I enjoyed the production. So give us a teaser of what's coming in the future. What's, oh. what, what are we going to see? What's coming out of Jubilee Theater? <laughs> Season 41, we simply entitled it A Brighter Day. Anything has got to be better than sure. what we've gone through <laughs> in the past yeah. 12 months. That's so right. um, I'm going to let him unleash his season. Well, oh, we're going to do it right here, right now. That's yeah, breaking that's news. Right here. <laughs> so we're going to open with a show called Fabulation. It is the story of a young lady who has reached the top. And unfortunately, the rug got pulled from up under her as she had to return home. And what happens when you've been to the top? And you have to come back home to mama and daddy, <laughs> you know, which is so much, you know, what's happening in the world right now. Yeah. We have a whole generation graduating from college and going right back into their mom and dad's house. And when you think I, I'm an adult now, right. but I'm back in my mama's basement. <laughs> so <laughs> how do we live in that world? Uh, we're then when my daughters graduate, we're moving. We're not even telling where we're moving. Hide it off. We're, yeah, we're, just, we're done. We're done. It's like, we love you. <laughs> uh, our next show is going to be Take the Soul Train to Christmas. Okay. Um, it is a family-friendly uh, musical. It is about a, a young boy who has to do a, a class project, um, and he goes to his grandfather to learn about the value of Christmas. And grandfather has magical powers. Um, it takes him on a journey through time as he experiences Christmas throughout the decades from a black lens. Uh, our next show after that is going to be Lil and Satchmo. It is a love story between Louis Armstrong and his third wife, Lil Harding. Uh, even though they divorced, uh, the two of them never left one another. Um, so much so that, bless her heart, she passed away um, celebrating him in front of the whole world. Wow. Um, right after that, we're looking at the production of Over 40. It is a show about a group of ladies who have all turned 40. And how do they redefine themselves? The kids are out of the house. Um, some of them are thinking about new choices, new decisions, and new directions. And what does being 40 mean in this new day? We have another production called If Pretty Hurts. It is um, based upon an African folk tale. Um, in, this vi in this Nigerian village, um, when a young lady reaches a certain age, she goes off into the world to define herself. And in the process of that journey, she um, asks herself, you know, is she beautiful? And what she ends up having to learn is, is my beauty what counts from the outside or is it what's on the inside? Really great opportunity for us to engage with um, the Fort Worth ISD system, to have those nice community conversations um, with schools um, and, and students as they start defining for themselves who they are as they move forward. And then we're going to try to close this. Well, we're not going to try. We are <laughs> going to close this season out nice and big. Uh, we're going to be closing the season out with Dream Girls. Wow. Yeah. That's a great season. Yeah. Yep. That's a great season. Well, thank you for being here today. Thank, thank you, you for, for letting me us. help tell your story and, mm -hmm. and everything. Y'all are doing some great work. And again, thank I appreciate y'all being here. So oh, thank you. Thank so you. we'll be right back with Jennifer Sarver, who is a communications expert, as well as a special performance from the cast of Southern Boys. So stick around. I'm here now with Jennifer Sarver, who is a communications expert, guru. <laughs> Jennifer, what? Do, what, do you prefer guru or expert? Uh, I like guru. That's guru. really right. It's on my guru. business card is guru. Great. Yeah. Well, I know you have, we've been friends for a long time. So uh, 20 plus years of communication experience across the board, nonprofits, corporations. And we're lucky enough to get you in town because you're actually from Austin. I am. And you're in town with Visit Fort Worth. Uh, doing some things with them. How, how, what's you know, being an outsider coming to Fort Worth? Give me some impressions of Fort Worth. Uh, I know you visited many yeah. times, but tell well, me about that. I love the city, and I'm really privileged to be here um, this week. I am on the board of the Texas Travel Alliance, and so I came up to visit with my friends at Visit Fort Worth, mm -hmm. who are doing a great job of promoting this city all across the state and all across the country. And I think the thing that I love about Fort Worth is it's so unexpected, right? You you kind of know yeah. that you have the stockyards, but then there's so much more. Um, so there's this cowboy culture plus some really great restaurants um, some up-and-coming restaurants went to last night a new little restaurant with some great tacos good okay. and um, you know you see this kind of arts and culture scene that's developing and um, it's little surprises around every corner and I just love the downtown area and the cobblestone streets and um, it's a lot of fun to be here and be with friends 
Well, that's that's great. Thanks uh, for for being here. One of the things that this program was really born out of was communication. Mm -hmm. That when I was out campaigning, talking to people, and even now as we've been in the office, of just uh, the city being able to communicate and connect with people, yeah. et cetera. And you've been doing this for a long period of time. So just for the audience, like what is a good communicator to you? What does yeah. that mean? Well, I think one of the most important things we can do to have more civility and more collaboration and more bipartisanship and more engagement is to communicate. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I sitting down over dinner, breaking bread, hearing one another's stories is a way that we get to know each other. And what happens right now is too often people are, are in their individual groups and set aside in their little tribes and they don't engage with one another. So to me, somebody who's a good communicator is somebody who's willing to tell their story and then listen to other people's stories. I think one of the most important things we can do is become better listeners. And when you have a community as diverse as Fort Worth, you need to make sure all those stories are being heard. And so creating a forum like this where people can tell their stories and hear other people's stories is so important. And I think too often we're shouting at each other from across the room as opposed to listening to one another. So my advice to being a good communicator is to, to listen a lot more than we talk. My dad always says you have two ears and one mouth. Um, that should mean we My mom listen. used to say that too. Listen, I know. Our parents probably <laughs> had that in common. Um, but really, really, we should take time to listen. And mm. it does take time. And it, it takes time to be intentional. You brought up telling stories, like yeah. tell, people telling their story. We all have a story to tell. We've, all had, we've had to figure out maybe a way to package that up. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is, what does that mean? And, and I... And, and, what does that mean to yeah, you? Yeah, well, I, I built my business around two things, storytelling and training. And what I mean by storytelling is, what is your story? What do you want people to remember? When you and I have a conversation and we walk away, what is it that you want me to take away from that conversation? So as an individual, as a business, as a nonprofit, as a church, what is the story that you're telling? What is it that people walk away and tell? Jeff Bezos says that your brand is something that people say about you when you're not in the room. Right. What is that story? So, so I know you as a public servant, somebody who works Heart, somebody who cares about community, cares about family. That's part of your story because you tell it, but also because you live it. And that's really important is that it's not just the words that we say, it's the actions that we take. Well, that's interesting. That's where I want to go with this is I think a lot of times people put on a facade. Yep. People um, want to act a certain way around mm -hmm. whatever they are. Sure. I think that leads to inauthenticity, mm -hmm. and I, th I think people can see through that. Absolutely. I, mean, yeah. I think one of the most important things we need to learn to be is authentic. Tell your true, authentic story, warts and all. Right? right? I think that we, we don't want perfect, beautiful speakers all the time. We want people who are telling real life stories. And when somebody, to your point, is inauthentic, you can see right through that. Yeah. We have people that are in business, people that are in elected officials, people in sports that are inauthentic. But it's those real gritty moments when you get to see kind of behind the curtain and see who people are. And that's when they're sharing their heart and sharing a little bit of who they, who they are. And they need to be able to feel um, that they can be vulnerable. And that requires back Brene to Brown. my- Brown. Yeah, but, uh, Brene Brown, yeah, of course, yeah. always, uh, always yeah. back to Brene yeah. Brown. Yeah. But but really, um, if they know you're listening and mm -hmm. you're not just listening to fill in the next sentence, you're actually listening to understand, then people can be vulnerable. And that's when the authenticity shines through. It's a, good, uh, it's a really good point because I think a lot of times we are trying to figure out what we're going to say yeah. before the person finishes so mm -hmm. you don't really hear everything that they're saying and it gets processed maybe a different way. Yeah, I do an, an exercise with clients all the time, a listening exercise where I'll get knee to knee. In COVID times, we don't get quite knee to knee. But I'll say, I want you to tell me for 60 seconds, tell me a story from your childhood that impacted you to this day. Right? Tell me that story, and I'm going to listen intently, and then I'm going to ask you questions to make sure I understood it. And so when I'm listening, knowing that I have to ask you questions about what you said, it changes how I listen. Because right. you're right, most of the time we're listening to figure out what comes next, uh, figure out where I can fill in that gap. But if I'm listening because I, and I have to ask you questions about it, it forces me to really focus, pay attention. And almost every time I do this exercise, people will say, I haven't been heard like that in a long time. Hmm. And it's really powerful. It doesn't take a lot of time. This is a five-minute exercise. But even doing that with our family, with people that we work with, tell me what's going on with you and actually listen Listening and ask clarifying questions that forces you to listen. Wow. Okay. Um, good advice. One of the things you've talked about, let's shift for a minute, about civic engagement, yeah. why that's important. And I yeah. think a big part of why this program exists is because I want people yeah. to be more civically engaged, to understand what's happening around them. It's one of the reasons I ran, was yeah. just about that piece of getting them involved, you know, working with the neighborhoods, et cetera. So tell us a little bit about what yeah. your philosophy on that. There's a study that came out a few years ago called the Texas Civic Health Index, and it really measured, is, is Texas civic life healthy? And the unfortunate answer was it's not. And here's a few different measures of civic life. One is voting. Voting and voter participation mm -hmm. is one aspect of it. But that's not the only thing. It's, um, are you involved in a faith community? Have 
have you volunteered? Do you know who your city council member mm -hmm. is? Do you know when the city council meets? Have you gone to a town hall? Do you know who your neighbor is? So when we try to encourage people for civic engagement, it's not just about voting and participating in the electoral politics. That's one piece of it is, do you know your neighbor? Have you met the person across the street or across the hall from you? Um, particularly if they don't look like you, right? right? And particularly if it makes you uncomfortable to go mm -hmm. visit with them. Um, are you volunteering in a different part of town? Are you participating in activities that get you out of your comfort zone? We are become creatures of habit, kind of mm -hmm. in our own bubbles. And the more we can bust out of those bubbles, break bread with one another, share those stories with one another, we become more civically engaged. I believe that a, a healthy civic life means everybody's participating mm -hmm. and there's a seat for everybody at the table. And so we have to invite people in, make space for them, and then participate actively. And so when we have communities where people are actively engaged in their civic life, we don't see some of the problems and the trauma that we see in a lot of places because people know their neighbors. They know what's going on. You think about examples like Hurricane Harvey. People that knew their neighbors knew, I need to go get to that elderly neighbor before that water rises. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who your neighbors are, how can you be helpful to them? So it's a practical like life-saving right. tips, wow. um, but also just think about how can I serve others? I, I just think the more we can put others before self, the more we realize how blessed we are. Mm. You know, you, make, you bring up a good point. You talk about breaking out of your norm mm. or breaking out. Um, and I think that, you know, we're involved in this group called Texas Lyceum. I love it because it breaks me out of my norm here in Absolutely. Fort Worth that I have to go to other, you know, I have friends, we have friends all over the state. Uh, that have a different viewpoint, and when I go to go to our conferences, I, I, I'll say a lot of times when I come back, my my opinion wasn't changed, but it was enlightened. Yes, absolutely. And I think when we bust out of it, it's kind of yeah. this idea: of the more you break out of whatever your norm is, it really brings more brings you together more with people. Absolutely, and I think there's some people that are afraid of uh, the term bipartisanship, and what that means to me is like, let's work together to get things done. Let's understand other people's perspectives. It's not about changing your like mind. Like seeking diverse. It's, it's not about consensus. Mm -hmm. It's about recognizing that we have all these different viewpoints, and yes, to use your term, enlighten. It enlightens my viewpoint. It helps me understand a different perspective. There's another exercise I like to do with people is I'm gonna show you a picture of a painting. I'm gonna show it to you for five seconds, then ask everybody around the room to tell me two things they saw in that painting. What you realize is almost everybody saw something different. Mm. And then you start to realize, well, if we only have one perspective, we're missing out on a, a lot of really great creativity and a lot of good viewpoints. We need more of that in city government. We need more of that in our business life, in our schools, all around. When we have different perspectives around us, it makes us sharper and richer. Yeah, I think there was a, uh, an article of the top 100 boards. The, the companies that perform the best yeah are the ones that have a more diverse board yeah. and then a diverse a staff from there. And it shouldn't just be a talking point, we're, right. we're diverse. It should be, we want to have the best board, the best organization, the best company we can be. And from a government perspective, we want a government that's reflective of the people, right? right. I'm, I'm a big advocate for getting more women elected and it's because women are half the country. We should have a government that looks like us. Mm -hmm. No, totally. Well, thanks for being here today. I love always talking with you. We could talk forever. How can people find you? Well, the easiest way to find me is on Twitter, at UT Sarver, or you can look at my business, SarverStrategies.com, uh, as my website, or on Facebook. And I'm so proud of the work that you're doing for the city of Fort Worth, and I'll be back to visit real soon. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate it. We'll be right back with a special performance from Jubilee Theater. Now, please welcome Davion Jackson and Joan Monroe with Rain from Jubilee Theater's production of Southern Boys. down it's free for all when the rain it pours it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor it washes over washes over me when the rain falls down it's free for all when the rain it pours it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor It washes over me. It washes over me. When the bird it sings, 
shining just for me and I know yes I know I'm free oh, I can hear the melody in the thunder see the light is shining just for me and I know yes I know I'm Thanks for joining us today for this episode of Fort Worth Forward. We look forward to bringing you more great stories of things happening here in Fort Worth. So if you have an idea, send it to us at district3 at fortworthtexas.gov. We look forward to hearing from you and bringing more things to you soon. Thank you. <laughs>